So in the simplest sense to record, wherever you place the playhead, that is where Logic will begin recording. Okay? You've got your counting up here. If you activate the counting, wherever you position the playhead, when you hit record, the playhead will back up and provide a counting and go into record at the position the playhead is at when you hit record. If you look up here in the record menu, by default, the counting is one bar, but it can be changed. Okay. So if I want to begin recording at bar five, I want my counting working. I'm gonna, I've am going got the one bar default counting, so I position the playhead at bar five here. When I hit record, the playhead will back up one bar. It will give a one bar counting and go into record exactly there where the playhead is at bar five. La 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 like that. Okay. Let's, undo, let's get rid of that. Now you've also got your if you if you have no counting, then wherever you position the playhead, you hit record, it begins recording immediately with no counting. La 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 like that. Okay, but there's no counting. So let's have the counting on. Now the other thing is you've got your click or metronome here. Okay, if you activate this, it's got settings. You can go into metronome settings, but simple mode is the default setting for the metronome, the click. If you activate the click metronome as well as the counting, then you'll get a counting. The default is one bar, but it can be changed, right? So you'll hear the click counting, and then with the metronome active, as you record, you'll continue to hear the click. Also, by default, with the metronome or click on, it will click as it play when you do playback as well, right? So if we have the metronome on, let's start recording at bar five, got a one bar counting, counting is on, here we go. One, two, three, four. La 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 la. And we get a click as we record. And then when we play back, we also get a click if the metronome is on. La 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 la. And we get a yeah. click as we re right, okay. So um that's the simplest thing about recording. So um so you know you, you can just position the player, record something, then position the player again, record something else, position the player, record again, and build up your recording bit by bit by bit. That's the simplest way to work. So I'll position my player at bar one. And I'll have him monitoring on this time, and I'll record. Um, this is bar one, this is bar two, this is bar three, this is bar four. And stop. Okay, I've recorded four bars. Now I want to snap this exactly to the end of the fourth bar. As we already learned, we put our snap to absolute value. I'm going to put it to, to vision, which means when I move the front or back of a region around, in or out, it will snap to any grid line, bars, beats, and division. Snap it exactly to the end of bar four. So I've recorded my first four bars. This is bar one, this is bar two, this is bar three, this is bar four. Now, if I want to continue recording, I just position the player at bar five. Hit record, the player will back up, give me a one bar counting, but I won't hear what I previously sang. It will just count in and go into record at bar five. So let's do some more recording. This is bars five, this is bar six, this is bar seven, this is bar eight. Right, I'm going to snap that to the end. There's another four bars of recording. And then I want to continue recording from there, so position the player at bar nine, it will go back, the default, you know, one bar, give me a one bar counting and begin recording at bar nine. But again, as it plays this counting, I want to start recording at bar nine, it will back up the default one bar and give me a one bar counting, but I won't hear what I previously sang. I don't hear that, it just counts in and then at bar nine it will start to record. This is bar nine, this is bar ten, this is bar 11, this is bar 12. Like that, you see? Okay, easy peasy. So simple recording. You know, you record something, 
and then position the player for the next bit of recording, record something else, position the player for the next bit of recording, record the next bit. Easy peasy, right? And, you, and then you've got the whole lot. This is bar one, this is bar two, this is bar three, this is bar four, this is bar five, this is bar six, this is bar seven, this is bar eight, this is bar nine, this is bar ten, this is bar eleven, this is bar twelve, etc. Easy peasy, right? But to go beyond that simple recording where you record something, then position the player, record the next bit, then record, position the player, record the next bit, etc. to build up your recording. Or you just record all the way through in one take, right? <laughs> but to go beyond that, pardon me, let's get rid of all these. But to go beyond that, to get into, you know, the more subtle kind of techniques of multi-track recording, we need to do drop-ins, seamless drop-ins, okay? Um, and drop-ins allow us to do a recording and then go back and review it and say, well, that was good, except that one little bit in the middle there, that little phrase that I sung, it could be better. Maybe it was out of tune, maybe the phrasing wasn't as good as it could be, etc. So the next thing we need to do um, is drop-in recording. All right, let's look at that next.